papa by your baby with a Dixie melody. When you croon, croon a tune from the heart of Dixie. Hang that cradle, Mammy Mar. Right on that Mason Dixon line. And swing it from Virginia to Tennessee with all the soul as in you. Weep no more, my lady. Mammy, sing it again for me. And old Black Joe, just as old, you have me on your knee. A million baby kisses I'll deliver if you will only sing the Swanee River. Rock a bye, you'll rock a bye, baby, with a Dixie melody. A new branch of the Yerksa family was about to bud. On March 12, 1908, a baby girl was born to Ora Yerksa and Anne McPhee Yerksa. Her name is Caroline Bertha. This beautiful baby would travel the world, become a first lady, christen naval ships, and wear the hat of an archbishop, capture rural scenes on oil paint, impersonate royalty, and score a hole in one. She would also become a mother, grandmother, and a great-grandmother. Carrie grew up in Norton with her three brothers, Ora, Paul, and Bart. Her father, Ora Sr., was known locally as Papa Toot. Toot was a railway engineer on the former CPR line between Norton and Chipman. Trains were a part of Carrie's daily life since he passed close by her house on the edge of the village. The rolling scenic countryside is spotted by colorful barns, farmhouses, meandering creeks, and perfectly placed church steeples. Norton was, and still is, an inspiration to a budding artist. Carrie took the train to school in Sussex, where she attended high school. Her mother spent many hours and sometimes days waiting for Papa Toot to return from the road. Carrie graduated from Sussex High School in 1927. She took the train to Fredericton to attend business college. Seven times he got aboard his train. And seven times he hurried back to kiss in love again and tell her to 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 say goodbye. But it was in Fredericton that she began to flourish. It was there that she met Ray Thompson Forbes. And they were married in Norton in 1930. A year later, Carrie became mama. Carrie and Ray's first child, Marjorie, was born. They obtained a kitty car for Marjorie, and that kitty car gained a lot of mileage when Eva, Ray, and Nancy were born over the next few years. Ray Sr. worked his way up the ladder to general manager at the John Palmer Shoe Factory in Fredericton. And in 1936, Ray ran for a seat on city council and won. Over the years, Carrie was very active in many clubs and organizations. Among them was Wilmot United Church and the Imperial Order of the Daughters of the Empire. Carrie held the position of organist for her Eastern Star Chapter. 
She golfed at the Fredericton Golf Club and curled at the Capitol Winter Club. The war had began and Ray Sr. was elected mayor of Fredericton in 1941, a position he held for eight years. A naval corvette, the HMCS Fredericton, was built. And who would send it off its berth out to sea? Why, someone named Caroline Bertha, of course. She christened the ship with a hard swing of a champagne bottle. The bottle smashed all right, but her arm ached for days. The kids were growing up fast. A fifth child, Eric, was born in 1945. Marjorie soon attended college, Eva attended Fredericton High, and Ray was busy building model airplanes. And Carrie's name was about to change. Eva married Eugene Gillies in 1951, and a year later, Carrie's first grandchild, Tim, was born. Tim was the first to call her Nanny. And to the 14 grandchildren that were to follow, she was Nanny Forbes from now on. And who is this? Marjorie married George Elliot, Ray married Joyce, and more grandchildren began to arrive. Philip, Anne, Michael, and Jane were born. In 1956, Carrie was widowed at an early age, but she was kept busy being nanny. More grandchildren, Peter, Nancy, John, Barbara, Betsy, Paul, Christy, Richard and Patricia. One more to come from the West many years later. Carrie worked in the office for the provincial legislature in Fredericton. When the Archbishop of Canterbury came to visit Fredericton, he hung his hat up on a hook in the legislature building. Now, if you saw the Archbishop's hat hanging on a hook in front of you, wouldn't you put it on? Carrie did. She took art lessons and became a member of the Fredericton Society of Artists. Her paintings include red barns, gray barns, yellow houses, horses, sugar shacks, forests and streams, rolling farms in winter, 
villages, seaside cottages, fishing harbors, and scenes of Norton. The list goes on and on. In 1968, something wonderful happened to Carrie. She was visiting Cape Cod, and the social director of the Chatham Bars Inn introduced her to a man named Howard. They became very good friends. In fact, two years later, they got hitched. Carrie married Howard Guyette in New York City in 1970. Her family now expanded, and Carrie got to know Howard's children, Bob and Susie, who each had their own families. Howard and Carrie spent their first summer in Chatham. They traveled to Paris, London, Rome, Florence, Alaska, and Switzerland, and cruised the seven seas. They stomped around Florida, fished off Miami, and put down stakes in Seminole. They bought a home at Tamarack by the Gulf in Seminole. But they didn't stop traveling. They visited their children and grandchildren. The Gillies, the Forbes, the Elliots, the other Forbes, the Guyettes, and the Corrigans. Carrie and Howard loved company. So the grandchildren began their pilgrimages south to the land of Mickey Mouse, Bush Gardens, and Indian Rocks Beach. I was everything and nothing all in one. Carrie was now going to take on another role in her life, a role she continues to this day, the role of Great Nanny. Tim Gillies, her first grandchild, became a dad. Tim and Chris's son, Robbie, was Nanny's first great-grandchild. And from this point on, one can lose track. The list sounds like the announcement in a railway station. Great-grandchildren lived in Ottawa, Fredericton, Rouse's Point, Oisoyus, Petawawa, Richmond, Windsor, and more to come. Throughout the years, Carrie has kept in touch with a well-known elderly man she has known since her childhood. He has a long white beard, wears a suit, and kept an eye on her children, grandchildren, and still keeps a watch on her great-grandchildren. No, it's not Angus McPhee, her grandfather. But well, you know who. The man who gives out kitty cars, model airplanes, train sets, dolls, and golf clubs. Golf clubs? Jack Nicholas, watch out! At the age of 82, Carrie scored a hole-in-one right near their home. Well, the Bay Point Golf Course lies right behind them, so one can sit in the Florida room and watch golf all day. But Carrie doesn't watch. She plays. Carrie and Howard spent many happy years together. They visited Cape Cod frequently so they could keep an eye on Howard's little red fishing boat in Chatham Harbor. Now Howard didn't own the boat, nor even set foot on it, but it was still his and Carrie painted it. Howard often sang this to Carrie. in Carolina in the morning. No one could be sweeter than my sweetie when I meet her in the morning. Where the morning glory twine around the door, whispering pretty stories. Sydney Forbes was born in 1993 to Eric and Debbie of Saskatoon. Sydney is Nanny's most recent grandchild. Butterflies all flutter up and kiss each little buttercup at dawn. If I had a land lamp for only a day, I'd make a wish and here's what I'd say. Her life is a busy one. New great-grandchildren due to arrive. More traveling, more Christmas dinners, more paintings to paint, and more fairways to walk. A new naval ship, the HMCS Fredericton II, was recently launched. 
Carrie was recognized for launching the first one, but she had no interest in getting another sore arm. But she did agree to become the Queen Mother for an evening. She shared the prize for the best couple with Marjorie at a recent Halloween party. There's a TV. Oh, there's some of these flowers. <laughs> okay, there's a flower. And here's the lovely flowers. Carrie's sense of humor, love of beauty, appreciation of family and friends, all make her an amazing individual. Thank you, Carrie, Mama, Nanny, Great Nanny, or whoever you are to whomever, for so much from all of us. Have a happy birthday. Nothing could be finer than a bee in Carolina in a morning. Happy birthday, Nanny! Happy birthday to Great Nanny. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Carrie. <laughs> Happy birthday, great nanny. <laughs> <laughs>